am joined now by Joe and Froggett. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. No, I'm thrilled to have you here. Uh, Joanne brings us a just, I mean, it's called breathtaking. It is breathtaking. Uh, a new drama. It's on ITV and ITVX. And it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at nine o'clock. Yes. Yes. And I mean, well, describe it. And then we'll talk about it because, yes. Okay, so Breathtaking is based on a memoir by the same name of a consultant doctor called Rachel Clark. And it's about, it's based on her experiences and the experiences of her colleagues during the height of the pandemic working on the front line of the NHS. So it really is the story we don't know if we were fortunate enough not to have dealings with the hospitals during the pandemic, during the height of the pandemic. Um, This is this is the stuff we didn't know it's not just a retelling of that time period which we've all lived through it's very much the inside story of what was really happening to our nhs frontline workers what they went through the risks they were put under the the costs of uh, you know for their themselves emotionally physically um and yeah the you know the the stresses and strains and and the pain they went through to keep us safe and it is just an uh, astonishing drama. And what's great about it is it's it, it's such recent history, and already I'd forgotten so much of it. Yes, I like it was just you kind of go, oh my god, that happened. Oh, why they did that? Yeah, and and but the but it's, it's human nature because you know it's, we don't it's, want to remember. We don't it. want to anything that's traumatic or negative. You know, it, it's part of our human psyche, isn't it? To to sort of forget because that's how we move on and that's how subconsciously we we move on but there's certain things that that mustn't be forgotten and I strongly believe that the story of our NHS is is one of those subjects that really we cannot forget and you play am I right you're a slightly fictionalized version of Rachel Clark yes so the the decision was made to fictionalize my character as Abby Henderson and also we're in a fictionalized hospital and that was because we wanted to incorporate numerous stories into one um but every single patient story in in breathtaking and every single staff member story actually happened so it's very much a retelling of the truth they didn't all happen in the same hospital but they all happened somewhere in the uk so it's it's yeah it's not fictionalized but my character is and the setting is yeah yeah and i think the you know i'll PPE clearly comes up in this thing and I had no, I forgot again I don't know if I ever knew but I didn't realise that that all happened before the first lockdown yes that, that, that the NHS was you know in, in such crisis around that so early on yeah and I you know I've said that I was I sort of felt quite disappointed in myself actually when I when I read the scripts that I was fortunate enough not to have dealings with hospitals during the pandemic and you know, the main information we were all getting in lockdown was the press conferences from the government. And, um, you know, you all, we take everything with a pinch of salt, but I was sort of blissfully unaware of the extent of the crisis that the NHS was under. And like you say, even before the height of the pandemic hit. um, And I think it's sort of a, for me, that's one of the parts of the story that just angers me so much that, you know, not only were our NHS staff sent into these very dangerous situations some some of them paid the ultimate price of losing their lives to look after us they were sent in with inadequate ppe sometimes no ppe at all but the government then was selling us the story that there's no problem there's plenty of ppe there's been a a few problems with delivery but that's all sorted now and that to me is just is just crazy that you know as a society we could have done more we could have done more to support our nhs had we known but even that terrible thing where they deliberately downgrade the level of ppb that needed no you can go in there with a a plastic apron that'll be fine and these are clinically you know clinically um um you know clinical professionals who know the dangers and they're being told through the system that no you only need level three ppe for aerosol generating procedures and they know they're in danger but to sort of not give people the you know the choice and their own you know their own autonomy in making the decisions about their own safety as well is just it's criminal to me. You know? Yeah. And also, I suppose, because it's intercut with real news footage and the things that were going on, the, the government statements and stuff like that, it, it 
it adds a whole other element to it. Yes, and that was very much the the decision to put those real moments of of press conference footage in there was very started very much to be able to connect people from you know to the experience we're showing them that they may not have known about inside the hospitals to what most of our own experiences were sat at home watching the news conference footage but then it sort of um developed into this very powerful uh, you know storytelling structure and every single um press conference footage that's used is matched with the timeline of what we're showing in the hospital so it's not been manipulated for dramatic effect it's very much within a couple of days of how we're showing the pandemic unfolding in what is a fictionalized london hospital and you it kicks off about a month before the first lockdown yes yeah and then it runs right through to is it that second before the third lockdown yes we run right through into the christmas of 2020 through into the new year of 2021 through to the sort of third lockdown yeah Wow. And for you guys filming it, it must have been like, because watching it is is sort of traumatic. And you kind of think, so for the people who lived through it, it must be awful. They must still be suffering. But for you guys, it must have been quite a, a harrowing shoot. It was a very um, unique experience from an acting experience. It was... It was powerful every day. And we had, our set was a disused university building. So our set was what we call a 360 set. So often, you know, you film in one room and you do all your scenes there and the corridor that takes you to and from that scene, you might shoot two weeks later in a completely different location. Whereas this was a a sort of live set. We could walk down the corridor through A&E into a ward, straight into recess. And the the set was lit 360, which meant there was no pause for lighting or setup time. So we ran scenes together. That was the decision of our director, Craig Viveros, to keep the energy, to be able to sort of run huge sections together as one. Um, So it was a very surreal experience. It felt, it felt, so real at times and knowing that every case where recreating happened yeah it was every day felt extremely uh, to be a sort of very profound experience yeah the show we're talking about is breathtaking it's a powerful new drama on itv and it runs from nine, monday on itv and itvx at nine o'clock you can't promise people <laughs> <laughs> the best time of their lives but it's vital they watch it yes i've been saying you know obviously everyone's ex- experiences are very personal to themselves and depending on your experiences d- during the height of the pandemic this show can be incredibly triggering for people so m- people must always look after themselves first and their own yeah. mental and emotional health but if people are able to watch please do please don't look away because it's so important that we all understand what our nhs has done for us and what they continue to do for us and it's interesting that the, the the nhs are having a moment you know nye bevan they've got that big show at the at the nhs uh, there was this is going to hurt there's now this yeah um it's it's kind of great in a way that people are getting this kind of uh, you know, no, no rose-coloured glasses look at it. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's it's important, you know, drama and art is a fantastic way to entertain, but it's also a fantastic way to sort of lead us by the hand and, and show us something and make us emotionally connect with something that we wouldn't otherwise. Yeah. Um, so it can be an incredibly powerful medium in that way, and it's it's very exciting to be a part of something that's doing that. And also, this shouldn't matter, but I do think it's interesting that it's ITV, that ITV have just done, you know, Mr. Bates versus yes. the post office. Now they're doing this. It seems like they're really kind of on BBC turf, that this would, <laughs> you know what I mean? Normally, you'd have thought this, because it's it's not a commercial proposition to do breathtaking. No, but I think maybe because ITV is a commercial channel and, you know, that's how their, their funding comes from, from advertising mainly, um, I think that does give them the freedom to be able to, yeah. you know, give that voice to to people in in a, in a different way you know without the constraints of you know investors or public funding possibly yeah. and is rachel clark still in the uh, in the health service yes absolutely yeah she's had to take holiday leave to do press with us this week so she's very much still seeing patients and doing it all she is an absolute trailblazer yeah. Yeah. and I, I know what 
while the record was on, we were talking about you, you've seen it now with uh, healthcare workers. But did you talk to many before you got involved in the yes, show? Yes, absolutely. I obviously spent a lot of time with Rachel Clark. And um, we have, have to give a shout out to our two incredible medical advisors, Tom Petty and Andrew Cinnamon, who gave us a medical boot camp, downloaded so much information to us to make us the, the most believable healthcare professionals they could. Yeah. And they were on set with us 24 seven and on, you know, on message on, they were so incredible and to have them there and be able to ask them because they worked through the height of the pandemic in the NHS to be able to ask them not only you know the physicalities of how things are looking and how we do this that and the other and how we look like we're doing the procedures correctly but also how did this feel what was this like how did you cope um and without their candidness and you know their experience I, I don't think any of us would have been able to give the performances that we did yeah and also I think it's one of the things where watching this because I'm like you I didn't really experience hospitals during that I heard stories from friends and everybody yeah. and you watch it you kind of think of all the things we complained about all yes. the things we complained about during lockdown all our moans yeah. and god this show makes me feel very small yeah well someone said to me uh, a journalist I was speaking to the other day she said oh, I watched it and I thought I sort of re-evaluated my life and I said well me too I said I pretended to be someone else for a living what do you think <laughs> I was doing I was there going wow so went, was it hard I went no 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 I wasn't doing it for real yeah. But yeah, I mean, it do, it does make us reevaluate things. You know, we're dealing with life and death, and we're yeah. dealing with the really big questions in life. And and such recent history. The show is called Breathtaking. It airs from Monday on ITV One and ITVX at nine o'clock. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, I really, really hope it gets the audience it deserves. Uh, Joanne Fogger, thank you so much for coming to see us, and thank you for making the show. Thank you so much, Graham. Radio.